and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Sultai Cavaliers. So we played this Sultai Cavaliers deck. Uh, it was a donation deck um, that we played probably about four or five days ago, and it felt really, really good. We talked about at the end so a couple of small changes we need to make, though, like adding in a 25th land, uh, for example, and some other small changes. And, and that's what we've done here. Um, I have gone through, like, we had three Your Rocks, I think, before, maybe two, but I've, I've cut another Your Rock for a Paradise Druid, uh, was the one change that I made that, that uh, I didn't talk about before uh, in the main deck. Just got an extra Paradise Druid here, because, you know, like, this deck's all about having an, enough mana, you know, having, having a lot of mana, because the card advantage with this deck is completely insane. Um, and then we also have some Reclamation Sages in the sideboard. Uh, for different enchantment decks that we need those in here for. But yeah, I think this deck's really strong. And if I had to pick a deck that we're playing today over in Ranked that's probably the best of the decks, like this would be my pick. I I like this deck quite a bit. The Jace is pretty weird. Basically, I have this Jace in here because we we have so much card advantage here that we mill ourselves out pretty fast. And... Uh, and so I have like a random Jason here that we can, you know, even grab with a Tamio or find and, and maybe win the game if we mill ourselves out. It's honestly probably not what we really need in the deck, and it sh should probably be replaced, to be honest. But we're going to try it here. We're going to give it some more, give it some love um, and, uh, you know, see if see if this is what we want. Um, but there's a good chance that I'll, that I'll be taking out the Jace for something else. You know, at uh, five mana Vivian, another Tamio, um, another Command the Dread Horde. Um, I don't know, main deck Masker Girl, uh, something, probably something else. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get started though, and uh, give this a try. Let's see if we can get the four one over here in ranked with our Sultai Cavalier deck. That's the hope. Yeah, streams streams choppy. Today, the stream's been worse today than it's been in months, and I apologize about that. Um, I don't know exactly what to do. After, after the stream today, I'm gonna uh, you know, unplug the router, reset the router and stuff. Um, but it's been storming here the last few days. We've been trying to reset Arena. We've been trying that quite a bit. But I don't I don't know what the deal is today. So there's just going to be... It's something with my internet, my computer. Um, it's acting up. And so, yeah, I apologize for that. All right, time to ramp. Ramp, 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 ramp. We got a mirror match. It's kind of looking like we have a mirror match. Hello. Alright, where are our lands at? There's a land. Okay, so I can go Cavalier of Thorns and ramp again, or I go Risen Reef. Let's just go the Cavalier of Thorns. Even though we... just to, It just uses our mana a lot better. Um, I got three black, two blue. So let's get three blue. Perfect. Because now next turn I can go Thorns plus Risen Reef again. With Thorns putting the land into play untapped. Hmm. 
Hmm. If I... Hmm. Yeah, we'll do that. That looks unfortunate for them. They didn't play land. Alright, we'll just put this drowned catacomb into play. All the lands. Card advantage with Risen Reef is just ridiculous. Yes, I, I think that the mana fixing is very important. I think the Paradise Druid mana fixing is very important when I have triple blue, triple black, and triple green cards. That's why I'm playing this over Leaf Kin Druid. All right, we definitely want our third Command the Dread Horde. So Masker Girl is kind of is kind of weird. It's like Masker Girl is great after our opponent Command the Dread Hordes, but it's it's very bad for us to have in our deck if we Command the Dread Horde because we don't want them to be able to get it from our graveyard and reset kind of thing. So it's kind of pick your poison with putting Command the Dread Horde in in your deck. Or sorry, with putting the Masker Girl in your deck. Um, we're going to try to just not have it and out command the Dread Horde them. This is definitely a matchup where we want Jace. For sure. I don't know what card I don't want, though. So I want this extra command, but I want everything else. Also, I'm going to take out a branch walker. Uh, no, you you would not want Black Leyline instead of Masker Girl. They, they do different things. Like Massacre Girl, you want against aggro, <clears throat> against the Nissa decks. Black Leyline just doesn't really even... It, it's just not a card that you should have in this kind of deck because even if you have a black ley line in a can, in a command mirror, they can just command your graveyard because you're gonna be your graveyard's gonna be really nice anyway. So it, it just doesn't make sense. And plus, using black ley line shuts off part of your command. You know, like it means that your command can't get their stuff back. So it's just it's not a card you'd want in in this deck at all. I don't love this hand. Yeah, I think this is a mulligan. Looks a lot better if we draw shock land. Blech. My likely turn to play with this hand, you know, I was keeping it, was thinking cast down. Uh, and then, like, you know, Risen Reef, Wild Growth Walker after Risen Reef. Hey, what's up, Rankler? Thanks for that resub there, sub number 11. And yeah, I guess I guess I should, probably should have just replaced Cast Down with Noxious Grasp. Yeah, the only thing that we'd rather cast down than Noxious Grasp is like uh, Hostage Taker, you know? Um... I am going to be casting... Yeah, I am going to be casting cast down here, though.
Did the graphics change? No. It's being so choppy. One lands. So yeah, next turn I'll go Wild Growth into Jade Light. Gain a bunch of life. This will be taking another five here. They did have Hostage Taker. Well. How about that? I kind of feel like I can get away with playing a Yurok here, considering I think they want to cast the Risen Reef. I think I can get away with this. I do think our opponent has a Command the Dread Horde in hand with how they were taking a look at the graveyards and everything. Are they playing Negate? Or do they have Cast Down of their own? Unfortunate. Gosh. I'm just I'm just made their command the dread horde just so great. That's so why I, I didn't really want to put the Cavalier Gales over there because I don't want to make it even better, but. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, this is over. I don't, I don't have the Masked Girl to come back, I don't think. Like, how am I coming back here? I mean, I'm just not. No, our, yeah, our opponent's playing a more traditional Sultai Command deck. to do his attack. So this, it's the tough call with the Masker Girl. It's like, if you're behind like that, you want Masker Girl. If you're, if you're like ahead, you don't want to have Masker Girl in your deck. It's the tough call with the card. Whether to play it or not. I guess we'll have one in there. Not really, Sandbox. There's not really a, a 
Uh, there's there's kind of a meta game, but it not not really. Don't love having both Tamios in here, but still keeping this. Cool. I'll trade a Tamio for a Duress. Ugh. Yeah, I probably should have had the Masker Girl in my deck on the draw and not on the play. Yep, probably. Come on, hit the land. Yeah. All right, we get to Cavalier next turn. Awesome. Um, I don't know if I'm really missing the the Lana War Elves in the deck. I haven't really felt. Like I'm missing them yet. All right, Cavalier of Gales. All right, so we draw three, put... I don't want them to be able to discard this command, the Dread Horde. So we'll put them like this. So we put put in the watery grave on top so that we just ramp with it. It's a nice interaction with the Risen Reef there. The only thing in graveyards right now, of course, are the two Tamios. So right now, Command the Dread Horde is just get back Tamio. Looks like they have cast down though. That's what I'm guessing. Okay, well, I admittedly just made a mistake there. I did want to mask a girl because I didn't want to set up the graveyard for them uh, next turn. Command the Dread Hoarding. But mask, I did. I made the mistake because, you know, our, our opponent doesn't have nearly as many lands as I do.
All right, we'll clean up the board. They're not going to be able to command. We will be able to command. Two, four, six, eight, eleven, fourteen. 14. I guess I should have grabbed the Tamiya, though. Like, that's what I was considering. So I was going to probably not take, like, maybe the Branch Walker. All right, one to know. Want a soul time here? What is this beating? Nothing. Do you think four color com command is still good or is the soul tire opponents playing just better? Honestly, don't know. I haven't played with and or against the four color command deck too often recently. And so I honestly am not sure. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, Rex. Yeah, because that uh, the other power is 14. So yeah, we could have. Yeah, we could have taken. Uh, Tamio. True. So it looks like our opponent's a mass manipulation deck where against mass manipulation we we do want to have uh we are going to be bringing in the uh the master girls here because like after they steal stuff we want to be able to destroy all the the creatures with master girl like this this is a great master girl matchup if our jace was a main deck master girl be looking better for us Um, I don't have any mono black decks currently made to play in the near future. I do not. Would they have just cast another manipulation if they had one? Is one question. Another question is: Would I rather, would I rather them manipulate Jace or Cavalier of Thorns? I guess Cavalier of Thorns. I'm not really beating either right now with what I have. Mm, that's the card I want, Cavalier of Night. Unfortunately, we know that we have our command and Cavalier Knight. Like we have two like of our best draw steps on the bottom of our library right now. Them getting an extra card every single turn, though, I thought was going to be kind of difficult to beat. Uh, with them this with the Jays.
a lesson to be learned here. So I was going to get back the other two Cavaliers uh, with 10 life there, and I, I kept the Branch Walker around. I didn't chump block because the Cavalier Knight needs to be able to sacrifice another creature, so I was going to sacrifice the Branch Walker to the Cavalier of Knight to kill their green cavalier, to kill the cavalier of thorns. Which then, you know, we would exile and we could have put our Jace back on top of our library to have the Jace like the next turn. Or, I don't know, draw with cavalier gales or whatever. Alright, so we want the Noxious Grasps, the Masker Girls. Um, I actually do kind of like Unmoored Ego in this matchup of just getting rid of manipulation. That's like the one thing I am certainly scared of. Oh, this may be a trophy matchup, too. Of course, I need to cut down on these fives. Um... Your rock's kind of a little slow, like untapping with your rock and then playing other things is a little tough. All right, how does this look? This looks pretty good. I think we should do some negates. Oh, that's true. Yeah, they would they would get to do the thorns thing, not me. Yeah, I mean, we could play negates. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it like this first, though. Yeah, like, Duress and Negate are both, like, fine. Uh, like the, I like Negate more than Duress because of, like, the game's going longer. They just, you know, top deck the, the spells. You know, like, the, like, they'll draw into their manipulations and, and whatever other spells, like, that we want to counter the games go long so I, like just taking it out of their hand right away with duress isn't really that important and like with crisis drawing you know 17 cards whenever you cast a crisis probably need to have negate after that i mean i guess you could duress after they do that Definitely do not want Tamiyo to get manipulated. Yeah, I could have double spelled with Wild Growth and Branch Walker this this turn if I would have kept Wild Growth, but. I don't I don't think that that wild growth is making the difference of me winning or not like it's just like a you know playing a 2/4 I uh, want to look for more impactful cards such as looking for another 
or you know, a command, the Dread Horde, for example. Probably should have brought in the third command, the Dread Horde. They're kind of making it feel like. Hmm. What do they got going on over here? That's a good card. So right now they have manipulation for three if they want. Oh, I guess the Leafkin Druid adds an extra mana. So if they play a land, they could have four. Alright, they got their two blockers. Guess they're scooping it up. Masker girl. Coming through clutch. Don't have to be too scared of mass manipulation. Where well, you can just wipe the board. Maybe I'm supposed to just sideboard out Tamios there because them stealing Tamio is like the worst case scenario. It's like the, the worst thing that could happen for me. So honestly, maybe I should just be taking out Tamios, and just you know, bringing in the extra command, the Red Horde, and then like a negate. Hey, what's up, Chandler? Thanks for that resub there. Let's get some hype votes in the channel. No, I, I did not have a, a I did not want to attack with my with my 2-1 before playing the Masker Girl. They had the 4-3 to be able to block it. Hey, Shafty. Uh, no, Smoif, I haven't. I made a vampire deck that I liked quite a bit. We played a few days ago. I guess, I think we played it on the 4th, I believe. one against Phoenix. I guess I have, as far as Cavaliers go, I have three Gales, two Thorns. I would like to ask about any lunar anomalies. So I'm going to name experience. Gales because I got three of those. I think you will find my notes helpful. Hey, we had both of them. Hmm. 
I don't really want to minus the Tamiyo. Like, honestly, honestly, minusing the Tamiyo is, like, the best decision here. But I don't really want to minus because then it dies to a Lightning Strike kind of thing. All right, we're definitely resetting Arena again after this. Man, Arena's been bad today. The, the, t the Team of Elementals list that we're playing after this was a uh, list that I put together. In fact, I, I mean, I, actually, I put together all these lists that we're playing today. I didn't put this one together to start with. This was this this specific deck was a donation deck to start with. All right, we cannot cast down the Kefnet. I can Cavalier of Gate or Cavalier of Night the the Kefnet though. I think we should probably do that. No tail should be discarded. I think this is more like something kind of wrong with my my internet being kind of wacky than Arena's fault, to be honest. Um I'll be resetting my router after the stream tonight and everything. But I it the performance for arena did did take a hit a little bit with the patch. Um yeah. The that is I agree with that. But it's not usually this bad. This is as bad as I've seen in months and stuff. Alright, so Phoenix doesn't quite kill Tamio on its own. Well, two Phoenixes do. No Cry of the Canariums in the sideboard. I don't really... Honestly, my sideboard's a little weak to... And deck and everything's a little weak to Phoenix. I don't really have... Um, exile stuff, I don't think. Nah, like, I'm, I'll be bringing in Unmored Ego here to try to name Phoenix and get all the Phoenixes out of their deck. That's something I'll be doing. All right, I'm going to go double reef. Land? Yeah. Lands are good. But we also just have, like, big creatures. You know, it's kind of hard for Phoenix to deal with a bunch of, like, four fives and five fives and stuff. We just have like big creatures, we, we can gain gain a good amount of value, you know, five six for each, five five flyers, you know, like we So like we're not It's not like we're the worst setup here. Stop with the shocks. Attacking gains is four life. If they use another burn spell, they if they use burn spell to kill the Cavalier or Knight. We'll just you know get Risen Reef back. It's it's a little bit of a bummer, but it's not it's not the end of the world. 
but it's, it's certainly worth, you know, gaining the four life. You know, just sitting here not gaining life is not not ideal. I'm gonna do the Cavalier trigger first. Oh wow, we don't even have a land to put back on top. Doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, it just, it just doesn't really matter. I mean, it's like, what card do I not want in my hand next turn? I'll just put the two Cavaliers back. Yeah, I'm going to have them all. That's right, because we just draw one. So, yeah, it really doesn't matter. Our post stopped playing discard. Sorry. Thanks for that sub. I appreciate that. Let's get some hype for our resub here. Sub number 13. Y'all are awesome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Don't love that finale of promise. Don't love seeing that. Fourth Phoenix found all four of them. All 
And we just gotta hope they don't have another burn spell. They did. That was pretty unfortunate, them finding every single Phoenix. Um, let's see here. So Jace for Unmored Ego is certainly something that we're doing. It's just, what what do I want to do besides that? Like, I feel like Duress and Negate are pretty nice. You know, try to take their removal. Um, I don't know, maybe your rock's too slow. I don't know, it has lifelink. Get a whole lot of triggers with it. Is, like, Tamio? Do I really want Tamio? What if I don't play Tamio or Command the Dread Horde? Is that crazy? It's probably not that crazy. Nope, no Cry of the Carnarium. I am worried about, I'm a little worried about uh, Command the, I don't know about how much, but I'm a little worried about Command the Dread Horde um, and them having, you know, like burn spells to finish off. Uh, you know, and like kill me in response to the Command the Dread Horde kind of thing. No, Jacko, I said I didn't. I didn't miss Paper Magic. But no, I'm not, not planning on playing Modern anytime soon. Played, you know, I, I spent a few years there just going to like every single tournament and you know traveling every single weekend and everything. It really takes a toll on you and uh, you know kind of got burned out and everything. But yeah, no to the, the question yesterday I said I didn't really miss it. I am happier with my life right now staying home. Um Guess we should just play this card that they know about. So if the Cavalier of Gales dies, it does just shuffle and scry two. So we have to put two cards back that we don't mind getting rid of. And while it's it's weird to get rid of Risen Reef, I guess that's what we're doing. I guess. Definitely gonna get rid of this Cavalier Thorns. And then it's like Risen Reef or Cavalier Gales. And I, I guess it's Risen Reef. You know, we'll have Risen Reef on top.
All right, give me back this Cavalier of Thorns. If I play Jade Light, I don't get to cast down and negate and have negate backup also. I do want more lands. Game two. Y'all are crazy. Uh, tap land, tap land, tap land. Does have a duress, but... Alright, I'll keep it. Like, they're gonna have a lot of interact... Like, they're gonna have, like, a lot of removal... Um, so us being a little slower here, like in these post-war games, I'm not really that concerned about us being that, that much slower. We do, we do have like the duress that we're playing on turn two anyway, um, for some good interaction. Get rid of a finale of promise, for example. Look at that. A deck filled with just a little interaction here. Poor Risen Reef. Never stood a chance. Get this land. Yeah. Phoenix, Birdie. All right, see so we find Wild Growth Walker. Okay, there's Wild Growth. Very nice. Um, let's go on top, on top. The trick is going to be for the Wild Growth Walker to not die to Lightning Strike. It's a bold strategy. Conceding there. So, like, let's say my opponent was going to attack there. It's not really the best for me to block and have like the, my my creature die to lightning strike but i would rather that happen than the wild growth walker die to lightning strike so i was going to block if they wanted to like attack and uh trade like the put the phoenix in the yard and lightning strike my five five i was going to let that happen and then of course we shuffle all these back scry two i don't have those two lands but you know we have all these things and then you know we get to scry two try to put you know something cool on top and then wild growth plus jade light next turn and start going from there. All right, we'll do a quick reset. And we are three and O. Oh. Yeah, this deck, this deck does feel pretty strong. Really like this deck.
as we talked about before uh, when I went through the, the four decks we're playing here and ranked, there is one deck that I felt was the strongest. It was this one. Yeah, resetting um, usually helps Arena's memory leak problems. I have not brewed with Kethis yet. That will be one that I certainly will uh, probably probably sometime this week, but I haven't yet. Yeah, this deck does require a lot of mythics. Um, yeah, it's it's ran me out of mythics. This this set uh, between Soren and Ajani and all these Cavaliers, uh, this set has has definitely ran me out of mythics. All right, pretty good looking opener. Tomb. Hey, welcome back, Rex. I don't know if there is a really good way to get wild cards. without spending any money. I kind of want to play the Paradise Druid first, honestly. But I, I suppose I'm supposed to go this route, which means my Paradise Druid really isn't doing anything. Oh no, is this Nexus? Nexus is not a matchup that I want to face. Talked about this actually the last time that we played this deck. I talked about it at, at afterwards. Is that we may just need a whole lot of anti nexus stuff in the sideboard because we can normally outgrind basically everything else, and that's what we did. I I put more in the sideboard for nexus for the nexus matchup, like putting in the Rex Ages and the Unmoored Ego. I you know added in those three cards into the sideboard that weren't in before. Those help out our Nexus matchup. Man, this has been such a frustrating day with Arena here, and I'm again. I apologize for the videos. I'm sure. Um, I mean, it's it. It has to. I mean, I. It's probably something. With my internet and everything too. Yeah, the frame drops. So I'm I'm sure the YouTube video is going to be rough also, and I again I apologize for this. I'll be try to fix this after, after the stream tonight, before tomorrow. I'll see. rough but i'm still glad that everybody's in here you know we got lots of people in here over a thousand people thanks everybody for sticking through it watching some good clean magic here on this sunday you 
would make an excellent informant for my study. To the library. Well, it's better for us to see Tamio than see Ascanta. Because Tamio only gets to activate once a turn, unlike Ascanta that activates three times a turn when you have those reclamations out. And plus we can attack at Tamio. We cannot attack Ascanta. Blast zone, blast zone. Um, all the Cavaliers have been, have been really good. I was expecting Cavalier Thorns to be, like, maybe the best of the bunch. I would say the one that's probably impressed me the least would be the Red Cavalier. Since, like, the Red Cavalier, basically the team are colors. Red, blue, green, I thought were going to be the best of them. And I haven't been that impressed with the Red Cavalier as much. It's still very, like, with that being said, it's still very good. I'm just saying, like, you know, as much. Um, I guess I go Wow Growth Jade Light over just a Cavalier. Um, the one that I've probably been the least, yeah, I already said that. The one that I've been the most impressed with was the Black Cavalier. I wasn't actually, I was expecting the Black Cavalier to be the worst Cavalier. But to be fair, whenever I made, whenever I was talking through that with the with the black cavalier, I honestly I did not realize that Risen Reef was a card yet because you know going through I I should not be keeping that card that I meant to do to graveyard there that's unfortunate that's gonna be my draw step. Um. Yeah, Risen Reef was a card I missed like early on and like just during spoiler season. And so whenever we we're going through the M20 previews, I didn't really realize Risen Reef was a card until the at the end, whenever we got to multicolor, because we. Uh, do those pretty early. Come on. Come on. There you go, bud. You can do it. your input the we had some good success with the white cavalier in the ban arc bow deck that we just played i know 88 ways to hone your prowess yeah, okay mm -hmm. I think you will find my like, note. All they have to do is just minus and grab their root snare. Oh, or they can do that. All right, Cyborg comes on in. Get your, get your cat butt down. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be command the dread hoarding or not. <laughs> I 
All right. Um, yeah, I mean, the blue Cavalier is kind of slow. And then, yeah, against Narset, not good. Certainly. It's like, are they going to have, like, the cyborg creatures they're going to want to kill with Black Cavalier or not? Wild Growth Walker is usually pretty slow here. I don't know. This is just going to be a tough matchup for us, to be honest. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing with this Tamiyo. I guess I'm rebuying on Mordigo with it. I think I should just play the Jace. This is a mulligan. I'm not keeping this. This curve doesn't matter against Nexus. No disruption here. Just see the three land, four spell, two drop, three drop. Like, ooh, keep. Yep, this is what this is what Nexus does. It beats the deck I'm currently playing. I need I need even more hate in the sideboard to be real comfortable with this matchup, you know, even more on more egos and duresses and negates than what I have. So going with the Risen Reef here, because if we hit the land, oh, that's bad news. That's bad news. I was going with this, because if we hit the land, we'd get to Jade Light plus Negate next turn. I like... I like Unmordigo Wilderness Reclamation if they haven't had a Wilderness Reclamation yet. Myself. I would like to ask about any lunar anomalies you have. Hmm. I know I noted this somewhere. Wow, that was like a, a perfect Tamiyo. Learned all I can here. Giving Nexus players more mana is not ideal in the slightest. Cool. Absolutely, King J. All right, quick deck tech on. The Angels deck? Absolutely. Alright, we'll do that after after match number five. You know, between the between the videos. I mean I can't even attack now because of the mobilized district. It's crazy. Just get to play my spell, have all my mana up.
And we got to, you know, just hope we're just kind of hoping they're flooding out right now. The four cards they have here. Certainly unlikely, but that's what we're hoping. Okay, Bishop of Wings. I like that card. One problem with Bishop of Wings is, you know, like you want to play it in, you know, a white mid-range angel deck. A strength, a, a good card to have in that kind of deck is, especially like these days, a good, a good card to have in that kind of deck is um, Takali Honor Guard. It's a card that's that's quite strong right now, but. Of course, the problem there is it shuts off Bishop of Wings from doing anything. Uh, I'm not sure how much. I'm not sure if it's if it's worth it to buy a few co a few play sets of Risen Reef. I don't know how much upside the card has. Uh, like, if you want to play it in multiple decks, yeah. If you want to just have like multiple Risen Reef sets of Risen Reefs, I don't I don't know. Like, from a from a financial standpoint, if it really has upside of um, increasing in paper with it being an uncommon. I, between like with the margins of buying and selling cards and everything i i don't think it would really be worth it um t with that being said the fact that it's in corset uh that's in the the corset um which may not which which may not sell as well as other sets so it may be opened up less and therefore be more valuable later on The fact that it's in the core set um, does give it a little bit of hope, but while it's a great while it's a great card and you know it's going to be in a whole lot of decks and everything, I'm not expecting. I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, just go purchase a bunch of them expecting them to like go up a lot. This reclamation is pretty ridiculous. Hand standard would be so much better if they never printed wilderness reclamation. Because then three mana to fairy would never have been printed. Because they had to got to make up for a mistake. By printing another mistake. So if I, uh, I mean, if I Rex Age both enchantments, we're pretty dead to the Nissa. It's not super dead. I guess we need to do that. And then we can have the Cavalier of Night try to stabilize. So we're going to go down to four. We'll have four attackers. Want to do a good amount of chump blocking.
cannot proceed to wrong. Keep an open mind. If we did destroy a land full attack on Nissa, we're dead to Ascanta. We have no chance of winning the game. Okay, that tapped Mobilize District. That's good. We need our opponent to like not have anything else, and you know, obviously them having Narset that goes grabs in uh, the Veil of Summer and having like the insights, like they've they have other things. So I don't really have a chance here. They are, of course, going to be destroying all the three drops. With the Blast Zone. I need a two-mana card here. I don't want to suicide attack them in because then they don't have to. I mean, they could just kill my five drop with Cavalier of Night, but they have the Nissa also. So that wouldn't make a ton of sense. Just kill their Narset. Like the phases of the moon, like wax <sighs> just like and ten wind. minutes ago, I'm still dead. Still don't have a chance of winning this game. The storied past holds our future. Okay. Three and one. Shouldn't have kept my game two hand. Did not have enough interaction. That's going to be one of our worst matchups, though. Our deck's all about playing super long and and uh, grinding people out and Nexus doesn't care about that. Abzan. Fortunate. 
It was not fortunate. All right, we're getting there. What's our opponent doing over here? What's what's this Abzan deck all, all about? Are they your memories or mine? Let's try this. Nah, my command and my Tamiyo, no. Like, they have to be a Command the Dreadhorde deck also, right? Yep. Yeah, get those, get both those commands out of here. What if we, last time we just brought in one Massacre Girl, one Command the Dreadhorde, and I cut um, Cavaliers, and I think I actually cut a Paradise Druid. What if I, ugh, I don't want to cut this Paradise Druid, though. What if I Unmoored Ego there, Command the Dreadhorde? No, Branchwalker. That's the card to cut, not not Druid, Branchwalker. Abzan Legends deck? I don't think so. We didn't see any legends. You know, we saw Cavalier, Explore stuff, Command the Dread Hordes and Sorens. And cast down. I guess I guess a Soren is legendary, but I don't think only this is an, a legend deck. Cavalier Blue doesn't have enough shuffle effect to be relevant in the deck. I don't think you understand the interaction between the Blue Cavalier and Risen Reef. One and two, it's a five-five flyer. It's really big. Five five flyers win games, especially those that have card advantage. With Risen Reef and Blue Cavalier, if you don't know the interaction, what what you want to do is you know you you draw your three cards with the Blue Cavalier first, and you put two back on top including you put a land back on top that then you reveal off of Risen Reef and get to rampant growth Jayhawk what's up thanks for that Twitch Prime sub thank you very much let's get some hype in the chat our 14th sub of the day well, good thing we used our cast down before that duress. So one to Risen Reef first, then we can go double Wild Growth Walker and get two Risen Reef triggers. But yep, that'll do. All right, nice four one here for the Soulside Cavaliers. Nexus is going to be tough. You know, like we lost to Nexus. That's just going to be a tough matchup. Um, you know, like, we'd have to change up our... You know, we'd have to add in even more in our sideboard. Like, maybe getting rid of Elder Spell, Noxious Grasp, like that kind of stuff. 
Or maybe just getting like this third command, the Dreadhorde, in the main deck instead of the Jace. It also seems like we don't really need the Jace too much. The Jace was like, you know, reasonable. But we could have third command, the Dreadhorde, instead of Jace, and that would give you another slot for like another Unmoored Ego. Like, honestly, maybe this deck should just have like two, three Unmoored Egos because Nexus is going to be rough for us. But even like if you. If we Unmoored Ego Mass Manipulation against the Manipulation decks, Command the Dread Horde against the other Command the Dread Horde decks, we're just going to go over the top of everything. Like, nobody's going to outgrind us. Like, between the Risen Reefs and, and all these Cavaliers, people aren't outgrinding these Cavaliers and the Risen Reefs. It's just not going not gonna to happen. Um... That was Stubborn Love by the Lumineers. There you go. But yeah, I'll, but we shouldn't... Yeah, Nexus is not a deck that you face too often. So I don't know how much we need to be worried about it. But it's not a deck that we'll face too often. Um, uh, Rodinius with that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much, Rodinius. The other thing I really like with Unmoored Ego is Tamio. With Tamio rebuying Unmoored Ego allows you to, to cast it more times, which is pretty nice. If you do get to cast like multiple Unmoored Egos, like your first one, you can kind of see what the Nexus deck's win condition is and maybe take it from them. You don't ga game plan against Nexus at all. The, the thing is, is like... That's kind of the only thing I'm I'm scared of too much with the deck. That and then, you know, besides besides Unmoored or sorry, besides Nexus, I think the most of our losses are going to be to like mana problems like either flooding out a ton or not hitting land drops. I I kind of feel like that's about the only other thing that's taken us down. I don't have very I don't have very much interaction with planeswalkers, of course, here. Like I don't, but do I need it? I don't know. Uh, that's no, the black ley line does not stop Nexus. Nexus never goes to the graveyard. It never touches the graveyard. It's a replacement effect. It goes to the, it reshuffles anyway. Yeah, Muldroth is an elemental. It's possible you'll you, Muldroth is better than your rock. The life link with with your rock is pretty nice though. We definitely won some games against aggro with like the, you know being the three five life link body. This thing's life link also. Anyway, that's Sultai Cavaliers. Um, all right, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Um, please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Uh, I would appreciate that. Uh, but thank you so much for watching Sultai Cavaliers, and I will see you for the next video.